Hello, this is Alex, welcome to Boomstick Gaming, and my full review and brief setup guide for PlayStation's own DualShock 4 back button attachment. If you're unaware of why someone might need extra buttons on the back of their controller, well, not only does this allow for easier access to certain inputs, but most importantly, this also allows you to press the controller's face buttons without moving your thumb off the right analog stick. This can be vital for certain types of games that have you directly controlling the camera often, or anything where you could really use some easier shortcuts, but I will be getting back to this in a moment with a few practical gameplay examples. The official back button attachment is a very simple but extremely powerful tool to easily rectify one of the main drawbacks of controller gaming, which is, like I said before, controlling the right analog stick in conjunction with the face buttons. This very lightweight little device attaches to the bottom of your DualShock 4, which of course still allows for headsets to be plugged into it, and there is no extraneous setup, no extra programs, nothing. You plug it in and it's fully functional. Now let's get to how this thing actually works, and I'm going to have my lovely wife help us out by showing us how easy it is to change each button's input and save them as profiles. By pressing down on the touchscreen for a moment, you enter programming mode to where you can quickly scroll through what you want each button to be out of the 16 options. Press one more time and that is saved as a profile, very very simple. Double pressing will switch between the three available profiles, and if you happen to overly jumble your setup, you can restore everything to default by holding down the left and right buttons and touchscreen for 5 seconds. Out of all of the third party back button controllers and attachments I've tried over the years, this is easily the most intuitive of them all. I have given a fair try to some controllers from Scuf, Razer, and Astro that had some back paddles on them, as well as some of those off-brand attachments for the DualShock 4, but they all felt somewhat odd with how the back buttons were implemented, which made training my muscle memory to properly utilize them to be somewhat of a learning curve. Sony's official attachment, however, really caught me by surprise because it felt instantly perfect in a way that is hard to describe, almost like it was built into the controller all along. It feels very natural to press the left and right back buttons while playing, and the learning curve usually required for this type of feature was almost non-existent because of how tactile and well-placed these buttons are. If you're curious how these feel to press, kinda hard to demonstrate through a video, but here is a super boosted audio sample of how these buttons sound in action which might give you somewhat of an idea of their input feedback. I did honestly struggle at first with attaching the thing since it's a pretty tight fit with the headphone jack connection which does feel like it could break off if you try to push it on at a slight angle. Just take those few extra seconds to make sure you're really putting it on straight and you'll be just fine. Now let's head over to some of the practical ways you can utilize these extra buttons in a few different games and primarily look for how I'm not removing my right thumb from the analog stick even though I'm using many inputs usually assigned to the face buttons. In Bloodborne, for example, one flaw of where the dodge button is placed is the fact that you have to take your finger away from the camera every time you evade, but with this, you can really get proficient and unlocked on combat by having the dodge button mapped on the back. A similar concept over in Monster Hunter World is the fact that the game uses triangle and circle for its primary attack buttons and cross for dodge, which makes you have to dance back and forth between the camera and the attack buttons constantly, but again, these two extra buttons on the back really alleviate much of that. In Apex Legends and almost every first person shooter out there, mapping jump and crouch to the back buttons completely frees up your right thumb to aim, or you could always map reload to one of these instead. This attachment is definitely optimal for competitive and casual shooters alike. This all also works when you have the DualShock hooked up to a PC, and as far as I can tell, it works seamlessly with every system that already accepts a PS4 controller input thanks to all the tech in this device being self-contained and hardwired into the unit. For $29.99 you can easily fix one of the main shortcomings of gaming on a controller, bumper jumper no longer needed, and really no PlayStation 4 owner should be without one of these if they can find one. This device might be subtly preparing us all for what will come standard on the PlayStation 5 controller, so why not train your muscle memory now for these extra inputs? Overall, if you want to quickly improve at nearly every game on PlayStation 4, this attachment is the closest I can claim to flawless. It shows that the simplistic elegance of this design and the fair price point can turn what otherwise was an enthusiast feature into a must-have advantage for all general gamers. If you happen to enjoy this style of review, consider subscribing to Boomstick Gaming, ringing that little bell icon if you already are, and you can also find me on Twitter at BoomstickAlex. A special mention to the top supporting YouTube members and patrons you have been seeing in the bottom left corner of the screen that really help to keep this individually owned and operated channel going. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching.